Germany's last hope lay in their wonder weapons. The V-2 rocket, a huge leap forward in the history of military technology. It was a weapon system to herald a new form of warfare. Wolf, as a plan, V-2 rockets, Taben. Taben was a nerve agent, powerful and lethal. Breathe it, touch it, even look at it, and your body shut down in all sorts of gruesome ways. Wolf was the architect of the plan, a chemical weapons specialist. He was helping the Russians fill the last of Germany's V-2 rockets with this stuff. Their target, London. Those cunning red bastards would make it look like Germany's final revenge. Killing Wolf would have to wait. Nothing else mattered now. I had to stop that launch. Somewhere outside Berlin, Wolf and his Russians were getting ready to wipe out London. But I still had no idea where the launch site was. I had the location of Wolf's office in the heart of the city. And if I couldn't find what I needed there, a government ministry building located nearby might provide some answers. The Battle of Berlin was at its height now. Close quarters fighting on every street. Snipers on every rooftop. Tanks on every bridge and square. The Germans were burning their documents to stop them falling into Russian hands. I had to move quickly. Surprise, it's editor Yusef again. <laughs> I messed up a lot in this one. Uh, I must I must have played, sat down and played this for a long time straight, ready to finish this. I remember at some point I do pick up the mic again, start talking. But uh, I'm chilling here right now with my uh, mother-in-law and the kid, so I'll, I'll periodically be in and out. Um, so this time, I want to talk about the Battle of Berlin. It says the Battle for Berlin all but marked the end of World War II in Europe. The Battle for Berlin, along with the Battle of Britain, the Battle of the Atlantic, and D-Day was of vital importance in the European sector. It was fought between April and May 1945, and the Russian victory saw the end of Hitler's Third Reich and the occupation of the city by the Red Army before it was divided into four as a result of the wartime meetings between the Allies. As the Red Army pushed across Poland to the Red... the Red Odor? The River Odor? <laughs> I can't read. They could muster a very strong fighting force and completely outnumbered the Germans in terms of men and equipment. So, um... They're not joking about that. The the numbers they're given here, they say the soldiers are uh, about six hundred thousand soldiers for Germany, and about one one million six hundred seventy thousand soldiers for Russia. The artillery is uh, more than uh, three times that, and it's a uh, not three times. It's, 8,230 for Germany, 28,000 for Russia. The tanks are 700 to uh, Germany, 700 to Russia's 3,300, and the aircraft is 1,300 to Russia's 10,000. They seem pretty outmanned there. It says, by the time the Red Army reached Berlin, these forces had markedly increased on both sides. Uh, the fear of the Russians in Berlin was such that both young and old were put on the front line. Nazi propaganda had demonized the Russians, and many Berliners saw the forthcoming battle as simply a fight to the death. Uh, 45,000 of Berlin's defenders were either children or old-age pensioners. For the Battle of Berlin, both sides mustered the following. And then... Um, They, uh, they're just telling you, see the first one, <clears throat> the first one was, um, 
talking about how they took over Poland, the Russians. And now for the Battle of Berlin, they uh, mustered. Goodness gracious. So Russia is more than twice Germany as far as soldiers. So Germany's got one million. Russia's got two thousand or two million five hundred thousand soldiers. The artillery is ten thousand to forty thousand. The tanks are one uh, fifteen hundred to sixty two hundred, and the uh, aircraft is uh, thirty three hundred to seventy five hundred. Just interesting. They went down aircraft from after the fight to Poland. Anyway, it says Joseph Stalin had effectively ordered his two leading generals, Zhukov and Konev, uh, to race to the German capital. With such a huge advantage in manpower and equipment, getting to the actual capital was relatively easy in that the Germans were consistently retreating, whereas the Russians had the advantage of forward momentum. However, both Zhukov and Konev knew the battle for the actual city would be very difficult. Despite the obvious hopelessness of the situation, Hitler still planned to direct the defense of the city himself, putting his faith in the German 12th Army uh, that had withdrawn from the, the Western Front. So, he's waiting for the, the uh, extra army to come in and provide uh, reinforcements. It says over 2 million uh, artillery shells were fired into Berlin and the surrounding area in three weeks and 1 million Russian infantry troops took part in the assault of the city. Russia's vast tank superiority counted for a little in the debris-ridden streets of Berlin. The Germans who fought there were issued with portable anti-tank weaponry and could use a hit-and-run tactics against Russian tanks. Okay, so... Basically, Civil War stuff, right? Tanks come rolling through. They uh, they blast them with the anti anti tank artillery and then run. So um, I hate when I do that. I lose I lose place. Superiority building uh, areas had to be taken street by street and building by building. Casualty figures on both sides were high. The Russians simply destroyed a complete building if they had been fired on from somewhere within that building. However, the city could not last out for long, and on May 2nd, 1945, Berlin surrendered to the Russians, and the war in Europe all but ended. Germany unconditionally surrendered May, May 7th. Shush. I mean, what do they have? They, they just basically had... Uh, they had five days to think it over, like, ah, we lost Berlin, like, what do you want to do? I feel like we should just go ahead and quit. But you know, giving up is uh, pretty serious at that point, right? Because there's so much going on that they're going to definitely get, get uh, everybody who's uh, uh, part of the war, you know what I mean? Dang, that's cold. Anyway, the Russians lost 80,000 men killed and 275,000 wounded or missing in the lead up to the battle and in the battle itself. 2,000 Russian tanks were destroyed. 2,000? Dang. It really took them out. Uh, 1, 150,000 Germans were killed during the battle. Mm. The infantry, an infantry soldier, Sergeant... I can't read that. Sure... Sherbina <laughs> S-H-C-H-E-R-B-I-N-A Sherbina was uh, credited with raising the red flag on top of the Reichs Reichstag uh, which signaled the effective end of battle. Why was Stalin so keen to get Berlin? Zukov in particular suffered high casualties because of Stalin's insistence on him racing to Berlin rather than using a planned campaign. Stalin would win the kudos of getting to Berlin before the Allies simply because the Allies were too far from Berlin to be a rival in a race. Okay. <laughs> One theory is that Stalin was desperate for his secret police to get to the Kaiser Wilhelm Institute in Berlin, which was the center of Germany's nuclear research program. Uh, yeah, that makes sense to get the, those V2 engine those v2 engine and nuclear weapons out there boy you gotta get that intelligence man that's one thing that we're learning with this game 
is that German intelligence is, is really high level, like the engineering and stuff, especially for war, war times and things. And the weapons that they used to keep everybody at bay became became super valuable. So everybody had a secondary motive to try and take them out. Not only did the weapons, the arms race mean something really important, but <laughs> I got, sorry, let me pause this. I got I got my little baby staring at me now. Hold on. Yeah, my little baby wanted a little milk. <laughs> I'll pull that from the refrigerator. Heat it up. Get it in her gullet. But anyway, like I was saying, the arms race was really important because it, it boosted technology from all sides. But the losing side had the disadvantage of having everybody getting, getting their stuff in some sort of yard sale. You know what I mean? Like... Uh, like a, uh, it wasn't even auctioned off. Like if somebody's, if somebody's uh, property, like they die or something, the, the person needs money, they auction off their stuff. Hopefully, it's worth a damn. And uh, then, then you know, everybody just shows up and picks it apart for what they want. You know what I mean? But this is a different situation, obviously, because it's war. So you know, whoever the first person is to get there is is uh the first person to start the covet the uh awesome technology the documents and everything everything uh that must be sifted through in order for for you to figure out the methods in which somebody else does war like say germany has an awesome v12 rocket or v2 rocket like they have in this game then obviously you'd want that information or if uh if germany has a special special uh engineering thing going on with their their um anti-aircraft guns or anti uh tank guns you definitely want to get that stuff too you know all that information you can use towards your own own uh machine gun tech and your own arms tech and also you can use it for mundane crap like car stuff you know like bmw uses you know <laughs> That BMW stands for the uh, symbol stands for the airplane, the airplane propellers. Cause they used to make airplane engines for the war. Yeah. So anyway, uh, go ahead and read on. It says, uh. It's got a quote from Zukov here, one of the one of the um, one of the main main generals it said, "I attacked the whole front. At, I attacked along the whole front and at night. As prisoners later told us, the great artillery barrage at night was what they had least expected. They had expected night attacks, but not a general attack at night. After the artillery barrage, our tanks went into action." We had used 22,000 guns and mortars along the Oder, that, that uh, river. And uh, Oder is also German for or, like uh, either or. Like, do you want yes or no? Ja oder nein? It's weird. So it's weird that the river is called that. Very awkward. I'll have to ask my wife about that. But anyway, um... We had used 22,000 guns and mortars along the order, and 4,000 tanks were now thrown in. We also used 4,000 to 5,000 planes. During the first day alone, there were 15,000 sorties, whatever sorties are. Anyway, that's the end of the article, but that's pretty much what's going on with this war that, that Homeboy is in right now. Man, I, I should... Because he's a sniper and he moves through like a ninja, like nobody ever says his name. Nobody's heard of the dude. They just know he's a sniper. They don't give him a name, nothing. <laughs> they do give him a name, but I, I can't for the life of me. Oh, I caught one. For the life of me, I don't know what the name is. Maybe they should call him Jungle Juice. The Jungle Juice Sniper. It's, it's just it's just so weird like uh, America is nowhere in this whole war and <laughs> this one sniper is all over it he's like uh 
He's like, oh, well, I just happen to be there, so whatever. <laughs> and that's interesting because, um, you know, uh, American snipers usually come in pairs. You know what I mean? Um, if you've seen any any movies, usually they, they pair it up. They, they aim really, really uh, delicately to get, get superior marks and stuff like that. It makes me wonder if... Um, I don't know. When they talk about good snipers, it makes me wonder if they're talking about, um, do I get two on this one? Yeah, I got two on this one. That's what's up. Got that two for, and then I can't, I barely can shoot a moving guy. <laughs> Isn't that weird? You get two for one, then you have problems clipping a dude. But anyway, um, I started out kind of being lukewarm to this game, but uh, as I got better at moving the reticle around and sniping people, I started enjoying it more, which I thought was really interesting. Let's see, reach the subway to infiltrate. Okay. Like, uh, things that bothered me before about it. Like, okay, one thing that still bothers me about it is there's no such thing as a melee attack. Like, come on. Come on, bruh. Come on, bruh. I mean, I guess it would make the game too easy since the, the bad guys just run around the corner when when they know where you are, you know? They just aggressively move towards you. I guess melee attacking everybody would, would kind of mess everything up. But if you got one dude that you want to wanna merc, you know, they give you a silent kill for goodness sakes. <sighs> Why do you not have a melee attack? Huh? Anyway. I guess the subway is destroyed. It's like, uh, hello? Also, one of the weird things about this is it, it, I've actually been to Berlin. And, and, you know, every now and then. Uh oh. What's going on over there? Hold on. They're about us. Sorry, that time the baby pooped in advance. You guys want to know something interesting? So, our noses are conditioned to recognize uh, danger, okay? Uh, if something smells out of the ordinary, we automatically get alerted to it through our sense of smell. However, if you're if you've been sitting in the danger for quite some time, the the attention to the smell will subside. Like if somebody farted or somebody pooped in the bathroom, they could sit in the bathroom for a long time and not smell any of the poop smell, right? But if they walked out and then you walked in right after, you're like, oh, good lord. You know what I'm saying? And that's a, uh, a very interesting thing about our nose. <laughs> so uh, my, my uh, mother-in-law could be sitting there chilling and one of the kids kind of poops in their pants. And because I walk outside uh, or walk into the room just randomly i can smell it like clear as day it's very strong and it's always really interesting because it makes the person <laughs> like i mean i don't know if she cares but i feel like if i'm the one that didn't catch the poop and i've been sitting in the room the whole time then then uh i i'm totally like an asshole for that you know same thing would happen like my mom would would uh start cooking food and she would like walk away and not set timers and stuff and she would legitimately burn the food but i would be in the area and i wouldn't smell the food burning but she would when she came in and then she'd scream at me for not doing her cooking for her you know <laughs> she'd come in she'd be like why why didn't you why didn't you tell me the food was burning why didn't you do anything like i don't i mean because i've been sitting in the burning and odor for the whole time and uh had i known that you know as a young dude i would have calmly combated her her uh, accusations with you know with that knowledge uh although um you know there's no reason why i would want her to burn dinner <laughs> 
Like, come on, how lazy? Even the laziest person doesn't want to eat burned food. Come on now. Anyway, um, so I actually been to Berlin, and uh, you know, these games they kind of like. You know, they you get kind of excited because they have these places that you might have been and stuff. And then you find out that they kind of just take the the feel of Berlin and add a couple of of um, landmarks. And then you're like, wow, I I'm in Berlin, you know. However, I uh, I'm sure they looked at a lot of pictures for this game because these war torn places look great. They look absolutely destroyed. And they have the same charm of, of uh, actual Berlin, like where the buildings are just like strong and built of stone. It's one of the awesome things about Germany in general is that everything's built to last, you know? Even, even uh, they, the uh, building's been shelled and bombed and tortured to hell and they could still just kind of build them back up, you know? <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, I see. Let me just add more bricks here. And it's like brand new. Like, okay. Wow. Oh, by the way, uh, the whole first part of the uh, game, or whole first part of this area, my goal was to stealth kill the guys. And I was using the bombing mortars, the noise up in the right-hand corner there, to... to uh, disguise the musket sound I mean I've done it earlier in the game but just in case you're new that's why they have no idea where I am because I'm blowing them away by using the musket sound but I'm having a problem finding finding the guys who are talking like that's how I know there are still people around the people talk, but the um, the snipers don't say anything. They just have flash on their muskets or on their um, sights. And I can see the path of their bullets. The only reason I know about the explosion shotgun thing is because of the Jude Law movie that I mentioned uh, in the last episode. He did that. Like, he took out a whole... A whole company of dudes. Like, using... Using the mortar... The mortar explosions... As his, uh... As his cover. And they were all, like, standing right next to each other. He took them all out. You know, it was amazing. What I don't understand is how snipers can can uh, make such adjustments for the wind and the the gravity drop so quickly. Like in the um, like I'm sure in the war, the snipers were just they were really they were really super good at. Oh my goodness, I'm getting bombarded by uh, enemy fire here. Somebody pulled out a machine gun on me. Oh, they know where I am. Where I'm at. Okay. There he is. There he goes. Because of the machine gun fire, I can't see his face. Kind of obstructs my view. But anyway. So yeah, uh, I think it was called Between Enemy Lines. That's the name of the the Jude Law movie. As a matter of fact, let me look that up. Okay, Google. Jude Law Sniper Movie. You guys know I use Android now. Okay, it's called Enemy at the Gates. It says Vasily is a young Russian sharpshooter who becomes a legend when a savvy political official, official, 
officer makes him the hero of his propaganda campaign. Their friendship is threatened when both men fall in love with the beautiful female soldier, Rachel Weiss. As the battle for the city rages, Vasily faces the ultimate challenge when a Nazi command dispatches its most elite marksmen to hunt down and kill the man who has become the hope of all Russia. Why would they pick Jude Law for a Russian sniper role? Does he even look Russian to you guys? Yeah, take that in the face. Does he even look Russian to you guys though? Seriously. Jude Law, Jude Law the Russian. I don't know, governor. They call me Vasily. Vasily Volkov. Yes, I'm Russian. What's it to you? What's it to you, governor? You want to fight? You want to have a row? Anyway. The room was a mess. The crowds had gutted it. All the papers were taken or burnt. There had to be something here that could help. Hmm. It's an old trick, but a good one. Bingo. This had to be Volf's escape plan. But before I could keep my date with that maniac, I needed to stop the V2 launch. There was nothing here to help me with that. My only chance now was the ministry building across the square. Yeah, that's pretty weird. See, uh, you can see right there he shoots right-handed. But then in the cutscene, he just used his left hand, which I thought, I, I mean, I'm left-handed, so I spot, I, I make it my job to spot other lefties for no reason at all, you know? Just makes me feel better as a person. <laughs> like, it makes me feel special, how many special lefties there are in this, this world, you know? Like eh, eh, all the presidents, <laughs> you know, Obama and McCain. Anyway, but it's just weird that they taught him to shoot right handed when he's lefty. Whatever, I'm trivializing it. Got him through the trees, didn't I? He didn't get a special kill. He just fell over. Du kannst nicht gewinnen. Du kannst nicht gewinnen. Oh. Well, he's not winning either. The whole platoon's going down because of a sniper over here. Uh oh. Speaking of snipers. Like the only American sniper we got. There he is. Also, I have to admit that I really like the, um, I really like the, the, uh, the facial expressions on these guys, you know? When you shoot people in the face and they do like the close up of their head, their faces are pretty good, man. Like uh I don't I don't remember the same one being overused. Does that make sense? Did a really good job. I mean, this is like the second sniper game. But yeah, you know, they they mix it up a lot. Hmm. Takes him out. Oh. 
No drama for him. He had a special hat on. They were like, forget that. So it seems I'm going to climb up to that area. So I'm going to go ahead and stop right now and go to the next, next thing. So you guys have fun. Peace.